Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmLife.com. If you are a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure you can do this homeschool thing. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there are just too many things to do. Or if you are a homeschool mama unsure that the way you're showing up in your homeschool isn't the way you want to be showing up in your homeschool, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to encourage you in your homeschool journey to help you strategize ways to turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. So welcome, homeschool mama. Hey, you. Welcome to my closet. I've shared it before with podcast guests that I'm actually including them in my closet for an hour once a week. And today I'm inviting you As quiet places go in my home, this is definitely one of them. My kids, my husband know that when the door is closed, no one is supposed to knock or come anywhere near the door. Now, if I brought you into my actual home, you might never see the confines of my lovely closet. Here I am sitting on the floor, my laptop propped up on a step stool. I'm sitting cross-legged with my pajamas also known as my joggers for the day until I get dressed because I need to bring my child to band practice. It's 11 in the morning and this is how homeschool rolls. Since the days have been kind of getting dark and I don't mean just like in energy, but there's that too. It's been getting darker in my part of the world. In mid-October, I'm seeing a whole lot less light and I'm definitely feeling the general energy that the world is offering us these days. I thought I'd bring us a little bit of homeschool humor. How you know you're a homeschool mom. But first, I want you to go find yourself a quiet place. Is it your closet? Do you have a box of stuffed Oreos stuffed under some quiet private place that no child actually knows about? Yeah, that's tricky. For a long time, my stash of cookies or treats were stuffed underneath my sofa cushion in my bedroom in a corner chair, but they quickly learned that that's where they were. So occasionally I'd stuff them in behind the pickles in the fridge. No one went there. Then I thought, hey, chocolate chips, nobody's going to find them in my bedside table. Now they all know it's in the bedside table. I've recently switched locations and thrown them into the plastic container drawer, the one that's designed just for summer plastic plates and spoons and all that stuff. Nobody's checked it out yet. Are you in your closet? Do you have your stash of cookies or treats? Let's pretend you and I are actually sitting in the great room in my home and I'm offering you a cup of elderberry tea or mint from my garden or all sorts of different things that I forage from my homestead garden. What would you like? Then let's sit down and chat about how you know you're a homeschool mom. By the way, for the price of a real cup of tea, you can contribute to this podcast at the Buy Me a Coffee link that's on the show notes page to this podcast episode, which you can find at www.capturingthecharmlife.com. You'll help me decrease my editing time as I raise funds towards the purchase of an editing tool. And at the end of this episode, I want to hear your thoughts about how you know your homeschool mom. So when you're on that show notes page, you can share your thoughts on the SpeakPipe app. I also want you to know that you're invited to the Homeschool Mama book club. This month, we're going to discuss Rachel Gather Cole's book about homeschool kids socialization and how they are best served in their socialization at home. If you have ever had insecurities or uncertainties or doubts about your homeschool choice, if you've ever been uncertain about your homeschool socialization choice, then this book will put your questions and your uncertainties to bed. The Homeschool Mama Book Club is not just going to be a discussion on a book. And by the way, you don't actually have to read the book in order to attend. You can join it. And I'm going to give you all the important points to the book and how it actually applies to you in your real homeschool world. We're also going to take an opportunity at the beginning to decompress from our homeschool days. 
get a little bit more clear on where we're at and how we're feeling about our homeschool, we're going to do a little digging deep, a little exploration into how we're truly showing up in our homeschool. You will not only get a bunch of questions to get you thinking about how you're actually showing up in your homeschool and how you really think about the socialization discussion. After the Homeschool Mama book club is done, I'm going to send you some personal questions to dig deep in your personal journaling time as well. If you're interested in the Homeschool Mama book club, you can check out the link on the show notes page to this episode. And if you have a homeschool friend that you think would benefit from this discussion, would you share the Homeschool Mama book club with them as well? If you haven't written a review to this podcast and you regularly listen to it, it would mean a lot to me if you would share a review on Apple Podcasts. This kind act enables others to learn about this podcast so that homeschool mamas can learn to take care of themselves. Method Money shared... The podcast is always spot on. The first rule of life saving is never become a victim yourself. As parents, we're only as helpful to our kids as we are healthy. Teresa does an amazing job of keeping this front and center and helping parents care for themselves. Wow, this person hit it spot on to my intention behind this podcast, that ultimately I know that how I show up and how healthy I am really reflects on how healthy my kids are and how much they're able to show up in their own lives. So thank you, Method Money, for sharing that podcast review. It reflects my heart. Thank you. So what's been happening in your homeschool? This is what's been happening in mine. My son continues to spend his extra time playing piano. He spends about 10 to 15 minutes each day learning a little bit more on a piece like last week it was Moonlight Sonata, this week it's Pachelbel Cannon. Different family members will give different suggestions to him on possible pieces he could learn to play, and he loves it. He can actually talk about musical theory when at 12, almost 13, I I couldn't do that. I didn't have lessons. He hasn't had lessons. He's just figuring it out on YouTube. And I suppose I could get him lessons. But between you and me, this kiddo, he's my fourth. I have done the forced music lessons very early in my first two kids' lives. Both of them spent years learning violin and at a certain point finally begged me to please stop forcing violin lessons. I loved their violin teacher. He was amazing. He was a concert master at a symphony, a local symphony, and had just a wonderful way with the children. And I didn't want to lose him in our homeschool world. So I tried to keep going until my oldest said, please, no more. So I talked to him about it. And he said he would actually let it go if it was his kids. And sure enough, I let it go. And six months later, my oldest daughter said, Hey, Mom, can I learn to play guitar? Lesson learned. You really don't have to push things for them to gain an interest in something. Although I am a fond lover of exposing my kids to all the things. So my son, fourth child in, never taken music lessons. The benefit of this last pandemic year He spends at least a half an hour a day practicing his piano because he wants to. So that's what's been happening in my homeschool. I'd love to hear what's been happening in yours. If you want to share what's been happening in your homeschool, you can connect with me on Facebook at Homeschool Mama Self Care or Instagram at Homeschool Mama Self Care and shoot me a message. Of course, you can always find me at my email at Teresa Wiedrich at Outlook. Dot com as well. From one homeschool mama to another, if you want to do this homeschool thing over the long term, I encourage you to take care of yourself. Kind of the premise of this entire podcast. Here's what I've been doing to take care of me in the last little while. So I was sharing on Instagram stories the other day that I like to take hikes. Like it's good for exercise, but it's really great to get a change of pace being outside. And even though I don't travel into a different topography every week, I don't head over to Arizona and experience what that's like and then go over and enjoy the colors in the in New England and then fly back across the country to 
a trail on the Pacific Ocean, really just 11 hours away from me. No, I am still hiking in the same topography in the Kootenai Mountains where I live. But I find different hiking trails. Different hiking trails actually satisfies my need for something novel, and our brains like novelty, hence TikTok and Instagram Reels. We like novelty, and finding novelty in the great outdoors is therapeutic. I highly encourage doing that. Another thing that I've been doing for myself in the last little bit is actually bringing out the UV light. I have this box, I think it's called a sun box, and you actually turn it on. It's got specific UV light that you're supposed to put about a foot or two feet away from your face for about 15 minutes every morning. It helps cue you that the sun is up, because in my part of the world, the sun isn't really up when I wake up. It's getting kind of dark. It is helpful to prevent seasonal affective mood disorders and just makes you feel a little bit more bright and awake and alert in the morning. Also, you could head outside to the goat barn and open up the goats and get them water and a little goat text for a snack or maybe head out to the chickens and let the chickens out and feed them. That'll also give you a blast of cool weather to wake you up. But although I'm sure a few of you have that experience, I haven't heard many. So get a UV light. It'll wake you up in the morning. It's definitely been helping me. And you know what's also been really working for me? Dealing with big emotions. If there was any self-care tool that I would encourage you to look deeply into, it is mindfulness. Checking in with yourself once a day and asking yourself, how am I feeling? Or what do I see, smell, taste, feel, hear? practicing grounding exercises so I can get really present in my world. Because when I do that, I'm able to address the big emotions that I feel and also address the big emotions that my kids feel. Whatever I can do for myself is what I'm able to do for my kids. If you want to join me in a discussion on how to address your big emotions and your kids' big emotions, Ask me about how you can join the intensive discussion. We'll dig deep and actually start to explore why we're feeling what we're feeling and how to address those big emotions in our homeschool. Hey, and I want to share something really practical for your homeschool too, like a little show and tell from one homeschool mom to another. Sometimes the things that are the most useful tools in my homeschool are oftentimes the most obvious things like a library card. If you don't have a library card, it's time to get one. Here's why. You're getting free books to borrow. Well, unless you don't return them on time, but you're getting free books to borrow and you've got a little novelty built in whenever you head to that library. You do not have to buy the book. You can borrow the book and bring it back next week. Your kids can take out as many books as you feel comfortable taking and they can explore those books during read aloud time every afternoon. The key point in this is actually to return to the library at the same time every week. If you don't, you're gonna be making a major contribution to the library. So if you go Tuesday afternoons to your local public library, return the books that you've taken last week and check out some new ones, not only do you have a completely free extracurricular experience, Your kids have the opportunity to learn all sorts of new things and it didn't cost you a cent unless you don't go back next Tuesday. Okay, so did you find the box of Oreos? Are you nestled in your closet? Because we're going to chat about how you know you're a homeschool mom. So let's go. Are you wondering if you've got what it takes to be a homeschool mom? Well, wonder no longer. I'll tell you how you know if you can be a homeschool mom. Three things that will define you as a homeschool mom. One, you are a parent. Two, of children. And three, you want to homeschool. Ta-da! That is all. But if you're curious to learn what other homeschool moms look like, I'll share a few ideas about how to identify homeschool moms. There are a few things that reveal that you are a homeschool mom. Do you identify with any of these? 
you valiantly defend your homeschool choice in three-point essay format with the grocery clerk. Then come home to worry that you're not doing enough as a homeschool mom. You hear the S question again. You know, the S question. But you're not worrying about the S question for your homeschooled kids. You're worried about your homeschool mama socialization. You buy purple cabbage from the grocery store. Nah, not for a salad. Rather for a science experiment. Or if you've bought purple cabbage enough and realize that you don't actually like it in a salad, you'll tell your kiddo to go find a stray piece of purple cabbage to use as an acid base indicator for that science experiment. Yes, I've done that. You listen to the news and you call it current affairs or critical thinking time. Naturally, you have a discussion. No time is wasted. The fifth thing that might identify you as a homeschool mom is that you do not waste time when you are traveling to do extracurriculars or heading out for errands. You might listen to an audio version of a Jim Weiss story. You might be listening to Story of the World CD or a CD of geography songs or an audible selection, but you do not waste time traveling from one place to another. As a homeschool mom, you know who Charlotte Mason, John Holt, John Taylor Gatto, and Susan Wise Bauer are. As a homeschool mom, your kids' birthday parties include full families, not just a bunch of kids from a school class. Your kids are whizzes in the grocery store, finding things, bagging things, guesstimating the total calculation of the purchase, even guesstimating the taxes, because that's grocery store math. You have a supplier. No, not that kind of supplier. You have a supplier for your own owl pellets, bacterial swabs, painted butterflies, and general lab equipment. For science class, of course. You make regular contributions to the library also known as overdue fees. Your non-homeschool friends expect you to arrive to any visit, play date, or event en masse. You and all your children. You know what the S question even is. You're likely wearing yoga pants or joggers right now. Jeans are for dress-up days. We don't claim to live a glamorous life. Oh, no, we do not. You know what the following are. Lap books, co-ops, read-alouds, and unit studies. You know how to create a curriculum out of nature center, museum, or art gallery brochures. You count your homeschool years since your kids were birthed from the womb or adopted into your family. You have earbuds in your ears while kids are swarming around you. Podcast anyone? Maybe you have those earbuds in right now? You know how to breastfeed a baby, wrangle a toddler, and give a spelling test at the same time. You know how to deal with every kid conflict under the sun because you're either going to lose your mind or figure that stuff out. You go to the grocery store alone. And it feels like cheap therapy. You have at least one, if not many, surfaces in your home that are covered with rocks, dead bugs, or cool driftwood. When you take a trip away from the kiddos, which happens once a decade, you return home with pencils and books or something educational. You insist that you all sit outside in winter jackets on frozen fallen logs so you can enjoy some time in the great outdoors with your math workbooks. In the middle of February, your 14-year-old can independently do the weekly grocery shopping, even paying for it at the till because your homeschool kids definitely know your PIN numbers. You get your kiddo to write a resume and a cover letter at age 14, never too young for a part-time job. 
The 12-year-old has started her own catering business and invoiced her first customer, learning about capital costs and loan interests. Your 9-year-old makes her own sleepover breakfast for her friends, pancakes and sausages with fruit salad. You know you're a homeschool mom if you think that your child is never too young to blog. It's just a great way to start a new writing opportunity. You know you're a homeschool mom when you expect your child to read The Economist or a Time magazine for current affairs when they're eight. You know you're a homeschool mom when your kids never see the snacks that you buy in that grocery store after you've unpacked that bag in the pantry. You know you're a homeschool mom when you ask your partner to help your child do mental math questions in his or her spare time. You know you're a homeschool mom after any visit outside the home you find yourself offering your child a new topic for a potential essay or a research paper. You know you're a homeschool mom when you expect your child to price compare in a grocery store. And you're not distracted when strangers comment on how adorable it is that your child is price comparing. You still want to know. You know you're a homeschool mom when you refer to certain times in your daily routine as quiet time, circle time, or read aloud time. You know you're a homeschool mom when you ask about the theme of your child's spare reading book, or about the secondary characters, or the plot, or the symbolism, or the setting. And last, but certainly not least, you know you're a homeschool mom if you are comfortable staring people down as their jaws drop to the floor just after you say the words, I homeschool my children. I'd love to hear more about what you think identifies a homeschool mom. You'll find the Speak Pipe app on the show notes to this podcast episode at www. Dot capturing the charmed life dot com. I would love to learn more about who you are, so introduce yourself at the Homeschool Mama Self Care Instagram page or the Facebook group, the Homeschool Mama Support Group, so we can support and encourage each other in our homeschool challenges. While you're there, you can check out my book of homeschool encouragement, Homeschool Mama Self Care, Nurturing the Nurturer. If you're a homeschool mama looking for a mentoring group to gain clarity, confidence, and vision in your homeschool, to create a plan to nurture the nurturer, and be intentional in how you show up in your homeschool, ask me about the Homeschool Mama Retreat. All the show notes and links to this episode will be found at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. Until next time, I hope you and your kids have a charmed week, or if you're having one of those weeks, I hope you can reframe your challenges into your homeschool charms.